Welcome back, my friends. It's your pal Clint Hoagland, and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In video 33, we talked about some fun stuff we can do by outputting text into text files, including how to write a Chuck step sequencer. In this video, we're going to introduce open sound control. Now, when I say introduce open sound control, this isn't going to be an exhaustive set of things that we'll eventually be able to do with open sound control, or OSC for short. Instead, I want to talk about what it actually is in a little bit of detail so that when we do try to do some more complicated things with it, we can have a shared understanding of what it is that we're doing. So. What is OSC? In video 28, we talked about MIDI, which as you'll recall, stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. MIDI is the go-to standard for connecting digital instruments together to control one digital musical instrument from another. Open Sound Control is both more powerful and more simplified than MIDI. Its design starts with a simple observation. You don't need MIDI cables to connect two computers together because most computers are already connected together via network cables. I'm making this video on a computer that is connected to the internet, and if you're watching this, you are too. Our computers are both connected to the internet, and so they're technically connected to each other. OSC simply allows a computer program, called an OSC client, to send a message across a network to another computer program, called an OSC server. The OSC server could be on the same computer as the OSC client, or they could be on the same local Wi-Fi network, or you can use the internet to send an OSC message to an OSC server halfway across the world if you want. The OSC protocol doesn't specify how that message gets from one computer to another because the designers of the protocol predicted that the designers of the internet would come up with good ways to transmit messages across the internet and implementers of OSC clients and servers would just use those. Chuck's OSC implementation sends OSC messages from the OSC client to the OSC server inside a UDP packet. I'm going to guess that some people watching this video are not familiar with what a UDP packet is, so let's talk about how computers send information to each other over networks. There are two main quote-unquote transport protocols used to send messages between computers over the internet, TCP and UDP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. At a high level, TCP works like this. The client sends a connection request to a server, and the server says, hey, yeah, I got your message, let's communicate. The client sends a message that says, I got your message, and then it starts sending its payload a packet at a time. The packets have segment numbers inside them so that, even if something weird happens and they get to the server out of order, the server can put the full set of packets in the right order. Every time the server receives a packet, it sends an acknowledgement message back to the client saying that it got it. If the client doesn't get an acknowledgement for any of the packets it sent, it sends them again until it gets an acknowledgement for everything. This TCP protocol is how most web stuff works. If you go to a website, the stuff that goes into your web browser is coming in via TCP packets. And that ordering and retransmission situation is how, for instance, you can get a big image delivered with no pieces missing and no pieces in the wrong place. So TCP is very reliable, but all that handshaking and acknowledging takes time. And depending on what you're trying to do, it might not be necessary. Imagine you're playing an online game like Rocket League. Your computer needs to tell the game server where your car is, and the game server needs to tell you where your opponent's cars are. In that case, retransmitting a lost packet doesn't matter, because by the time I find out that the game server lost a packet and I retransmit it, my car is not going to be at that spot anymore anyway. The server just needs to know where I am as often as possible. It doesn't necessarily need to know every place that I've ever been. For cases like that, network programs use UDP, which stands for User Datagram Protocol. A datagram, in this instance, refers to a self-contained message to be delivered across a network. UDP packets are smaller than TCP packets because they don't have to handle all the overhead required to manage the handshaking and bookkeeping that TCP has to do. That means that you can send lots of them over a network and they'll get to their destination really fast. Which is why OSC messages in Chuck are sent inside UDP packets. So if OSC messages are inside UDP packets, what's inside an OSC message? If you recall from the MIDI video, there's a lot of set definitions for what goes on with MIDI. There's a concept of a note on and a note off, velocity is a thing, mod wheel is a thing, there's quite a lot in the MIDI protocol that is standard, because MIDI was designed to make it so that controllers from any manufacturer would work well with synthesizers from any other manufacturer. Open sound control is kind of the opposite of that. The protocol states that messages should contain a method name with an address that basically looks like a path, and it can also optionally contain parameters. A parameter can be a string, an int, a float, or a blob which blobs are just unstructured data, so we won't be using blobs. If an OSC server receives an OSC message, it checks to see if it knows what to do with the method requested in the message. If it doesn't know what to do with it, it ignores the message. 
if it does know, it does whatever its programmer said it should do when it gets that kind of message. And that's it. The open in open sound control refers to the fact that, unlike MIDI, you can do literally anything you want to with the OSC protocol. The downside is that no one will know how to talk to your server unless you tell them. But that's okay, because we're going to write our OSC server and our OSC client at the same time. Let's write some code. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a OSC in, which is just an OSC in object. I'll call mine OSC in. And then we're going to make an OSC message. This is going to look familiar to you if you're used to, uh, or you saw the MIDI tutorial, because this is very much the same as the way that MIDI works. Next thing we're going to assign the port. And a port is a part of the address for an application that's on your computer. So your computer has an address called an IP address, and that's how other computers can find your computer on the network. And then applications can have their own address within an address, and that's called a port number. So like, for example, the standard HTTP address for a web server is port 80, and the standard secure one on a web server is 443. Uh, we're going to say that the address for our Chuck server is going to be 9000 on this computer that I'm running now. So we're going to OSC in that address, or port rather, that should be OSC in port. And then we're going to add an address within the Chuck server. And this is that thing that they called an OSC address pattern. We're going to do OSC in that add address. And we're going to say so they have to start with a slash. And we're going to call it my OSC slash capital H hello. So that's all we need to do to create an OSC Chuck server. In order to have it listen for anything, we're going to create an infinite while loop. Um, let's see. I'm going to put in here waiting for OSC message. And then I'm going to chuck OSC in the lowercase one. That's our object, not the type. We're going to chuck that to now. And if you recall from our events tutorial or from the MIDI video, sending an event, which OSC in is an event type, we're going to send that to now, and that's going to cause the Chuck program to wait for something to happen on the OSC in. And then we're going to make another while loop, and that is going to say while OSC in dot RECV for receive, and then OSC message. And we're going to say that that is not equal to zero. And what this means is if our OSC in event triggers and, uh, and this launches from now, then it will take its uh, receive buffer, buffer and sta uh, stash it inside this message. At this moment, we're not going to use this message yet. You're going to see how that message gets used in a minute. And then uh, for now, I'm just going to log to the console that I received something. And then I'm just going to save that up and let's work on the Chuck client. First, we'll declare an OSC out, which I'll just call it OSC out lowercase o. And then I'm going to add a, a destination for it. So I'm going to call that OSC.dest. And that's going to be, I'm going to call this localhost. And then I'm going to just put in 9000. So what does that mean? Localhost is an alias for the IP address of the computer that you're running this process from. And then the 9000 is the port, which we defined in our server. We arbitrarily chose the number 9000. It could have been any other number, but we chose 9000, so we have to use 9000 here. And that should have been OSC out, not just OSC. 
Next, we need to start our message, and we do that by saying OSC out dot start, and then we give it the address pattern that we want to send to that chuck port, the, the, the port that is listening on that destination. So we, we define that as slash my OSC slash hello. I'm not gonna verify that that was true here. Yeah, lowercase my OSC slash hello. And so I'm gonna call, that's the address pattern that we are going to be sending to that port. And finally, we are going to do a OSC dot Oh, OC out dot send. Now I've got two different terminals open. I'm going to chuck my OSC server. So it says it's waiting for an OSC message. And then in this one, if everything works right, I should be able to send a message from my console on the right to my console on the left by chucking my OSC client test. So as you can see, it says that I received something. I'm an operational OSC server, and then it went back to the beginning of its OSC, or went to its event loop again. So I could send another message to it, and it would do it again. So that is all the code that it takes to create a operational OSC server using Chuck. Now, what other things can we do now that we know this? So here I've added some sound making capability to my Chuck OSC server. I've got an oscillator going into an envelope, going into the DAC. Envelope also goes into a reverb into the DAC, sets some defaults. Uh, you've seen all this stuff before. Let's change this message to something like, bring a note. And then we send a one to env dot key on, save it up. And now let's, uh, Start it up again. We're waiting for an OSC message, and then we go back to our Chuck client and we send a OSC message from our Chuck client to our Chuck ser server, and let's see what happens. Play to note, it's waiting for a another message on the OSC port. Let's send another one. So we can cause one Chuck VM to send a message via OSC to another Chuck VM, and that sec second Chuck VM, the server, can use that message to play a note. So wouldn't it be nice if we could tell it which note to play rather than just playing a note? So let's see how that works. We're going to go into the client and we're going to send a 72 to int note, and then we're going to Send note to ask out dot add. So we've added that note as the first parameter or argument in our OSC message that we're going to send to our receiver. So we said before that we were going to see what we can do with that OSC message. This is it. So now we're going to do OSC message dot get int and we're going to say that this is going to be the first argument that came in which is argument zero and we're going to send that to int note inside this file and then let's change this message to we'll add the note to that uh, logging string and then we're going to convert this to uh, a frequency, and then we're going to send it to the oscillator's frequency. And we have to stop this down here, and then we're going to start it up again. I did something wrong. Okay. Oh. This does not have a uh, capital. Let's try this again. Okay, now it's waiting. And we're going to try the sending from the client again. 
So we changed it. it we changed the uh, client to send a, a note 72 and it played 72. Let's change it. Uh, let's say change it to 76. So we can t uh, use we can use these arguments to send things over the network to the other Chuck VM, and uh, it can use those arguments inside its uh, the OSC server's file, just like uh, calling a method on a, a, on a class or something. So here I have loaded up an array with some notes, and I am choosing those notes at random, and then I added in uh, some time after I send out the OSC message so that it waits 150 milliseconds and then before it sends its next OSC message. Uh, that's important because you don't wanna like uh, basically DDoS your own Chuck server with uh, packets by forgetting to put in a timer. I did that a little while ago while I was testing this out. Don't do that. Okay, uh, so now I have not made any changes to my Chuck server, but I'm going to launch it. Again, it is waiting for an OSC message, and now I'm going to chuck my client. So note that I stopped my Chuck client and it stopped playing the sound. I can, let's let's change this to, let's make it a, a minor chord. Save it up. The Chuck server is still sitting there waiting for a message. I changed the client and now I'm going to launch it again. Stop the client and the server stops because it's no longer receiving messages. So we said before that localhost, which we have here, is a alias for your IP address of your computer on your Wi-Fi network. Uh, you can find out the real address of your computer by going to a command prompt, and then typing in ipconfig. And then th this right here is my local address. Now you can use that instead, punching that in there instead of localhost. If you want to hit an OSC server that's on your network that isn't on your local machine, and I'm gonna demonstrate that here, I have uh, put a OSC server on my personal laptop, and then I'm going to launch it from my desktop where I'm making this recording. Okay, on computer, with the, the server, I'm going to start the server running, awaiting OSC messages. And then I'm going to start on the, the client computer, I am going to start transmitting. So as you can see, OSC can be used to control an OSC server or multiple servers from an OSC client sending messages over a network. As you also saw, you can use it to control one Chuck process from another, which can be a nice way to separate your Chuck programs so they don't need to be launched together. There are more things you can do with OSC, such as speak back and forth with DAWs and visualization programs. I'm not going to get into that today, but that's something we can look into in the future. In today's video, we introduced open sound control. In our next video, we're going to talk some more about music theory, specifically about chord functions.